Yes boys, we are back and welcome to another video. So today we are going to test out this article here to see if it has any validity on eBay as an eBay seller. So we're on the Manchester Evening News, what an awesome newspaper, uh, the 13 eBay hacks for buyers and sellers including typo tricks, secret codes and the 99p last minute auction list. I don't even know what that particularly is referring to but okay we'll go with it so let's go down and check out the first one never miss an item selling at 99p often ebay users post items at 99p or a pound in the hope that the cheap price will spark a bidding war but many times these items go unspotted by users and remain at the ridiculously low price the last minute auction website lists ebay auctions due to finish within one hour that are still priced at one pound or less so you can swoop in and place a last minute bid okay okay first one is pretty good that is a good hack i've never even heard of that website in fact i'm gonna go on it now uh, and I possibly won't publish this video because if that's good, why should I let people know about that? Oh my god, right, let's go on this. Okay, internal error. Support has been notified. Uh, maybe that website isn't in operation anymore. So yeah, okay, maybe that wasn't the best tip, but I'm sure there's another website like that out there. So maybe uh, go away and do a bit of research, see if you can find a website like that, because that is an awesome hack. Uh, that is actually number one is pretty good. So number two, search for typos. Thousands of items on eBay are listed with typos and spelling mistakes. Correctly spelt searches won't match these listings. So these auctions often end with no bids. To get around this, you can use a spelling mistake spotter like Fat Fingers. Now I was told about Fat Fingers quite a while ago. I did use it for a little bit. It helped a little bit with doing eBay sniping and stuff, but I don't know. It, for me personally, I, I, maybe it was just me not being able to use it properly. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just didn't really get on with it incredibly well. But again, that is a good tip. You know, go out, go over there, check out Fat Fingers. Um, if there's a referral code, you better know that referral code's in the description. We got it. We're out here making money. We got to make some money, but I doubt there's a referral co code, so... Uh, now I'm just sad. Anyway, once on the website, enter the correct spelling of your item and Fat Fingers will scour eBay for incorrectly spelled versions of the same word. So it's a very inventive name actually, Fat Fingers, because obviously it's reminiscent of if you've got, you know, larger fingers, you're going on your keypad and you're pressing two, um, oh, what do you call it, two buttons at once. So it's, it's an inventive name. It's a good name. I don't think it's... Um, too offensive but you know it, it's an inventive name anyway so next one here anyway scan barcodes to see how much a product can sell for yeah we kind of know about that one that's just talking about the ebay app and scanning on the ebay app i don't actually do that i just type it in on on ebay and then click complete and sold as normal um but yeah you know you can you can do that but it's not really a, a secret tip or it's not really a, a a big ebay hack it's just something that's there um, that's pretty obvious to be honest, but yeah, there's that one save your searches to get email alerts now again One that a lot of people know about these days if you're looking for a specific product But can't find exactly what you want save your search eBay will send you eBay e email notifications or alerts when new items matching your search are listed save the search click on the save this search button located next to the love heart below the search bar. So again, you know, it's it's good. It's a it's a good thing, but it's quite an obvious one that really, if I'm honest. Bid an uneven amount. This is a good one, but again, it's kind of 2010 level or 2012 level. It's not 2020 level. Yeah, this was really uh, you know a real hack in 2010 or 2012. But these days, it's um, you know it's just everyone knows to do it. And I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who don't do it, but a lot of people know about it now. So yeah, this is basically where you just put in a random figure in. Let's say uh, instead of putting 
£10 exactly in, you'll put £10.02 or £10.04 or £10.11 or something. Because if someone was to bid £10 on your bid, you might not win it. But if you actually bid that £10.11, you, you're definitely securing it then. So it's interesting. Here we go. Wipe out potential competition by bidding an uneven amount like £10.63. I mean, it's good, but it's just not like an incredible hack these days. Buy before you sell. Buyers are more likely to bid from sellers with a high percentage of positive feedback. Yeah, again, it's not really, it doesn't constitute a hack though, does it? It's not, it's not a real hack. It's not a real, oh my god, this is, this is the best thing in the world. This is going to uh, incredibly improve your eBay account or your eBay buying or selling experience, is it? So, yeah. Anyway, that's that one. Haggle down the price of your desired items. A listing doesn't have to show the make an offer button for you to try and haggle down the price. Well, 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 well. This is where sellers would, uh, would get a bit annoyed because, you know, if you've not put offers on your item and, like, I mean, eBay's got this function now where obviously buyers can send you an offer through the messaging system. And I know I have heard in the group and just here and there that a lot of eBay sellers actually don't like this. Now, I'm not that fussed about this. If people want to make me an offer, even though I've not got offers on the item, but we want to make me an offer through the messaging system, I don't mind, but I know other sellers do. And so uh, this one, yeah, okay, you can. it's a bit of a hack for sure. It is a little, little bit of a hack, not a huge one. Um, but, you know, sellers might be doing, oh, well, I'm just going to ignore that offer anyway because I've not got to make an offer on the item. So, yeah, but, yeah, okay, I, I kind of get it. I get it. I get how it would be a hack for buyers because buyers might not realise that. They might not realise that we can actually send an offer through the messaging system even if the item doesn't have offers on. Visit charity shops in affluent areas. If you're trying to make some serious profit on eBay, hit the charity shop. Well, okay, right, this is my experience. This is a... Like a bit of a weird one because yeah sometimes you can get good bargains in affluent areas and obviously you'll get good bargains of really good quality items and make good profit but then you have a lot of affluent areas that are just far too high priced so again it's a bit of a hack but it's not an incredible hack learn the lingo uh, eBay pros use eBay pros. Oh, eBay. So does that mean that if I can actually know what all these are, I'm an eBay pro? Oh, that's so good. Anyway, eBay pros use codes. Codes. We don't you know? We use codes in our listings. We use codes. We have secret codes to talk to other resellers with. Oh my god, that's so funny. It glamorizes it so much, doesn't it? Um, to fit in more information without exceeding character. Well, it's a good idea, you know. To save newbies from confusion, MoneySavingExpert.com have decoded, decoded, as if you're really, really hard to decode, decode the most commonly used eBay jargon. BN, brand new, well, I knew that one. BNWT, brand new with tags, I knew that one. BNIB, brand new in box, I knew that one. BNI, brand new, buy it now. Oh, I nearly uh, messed up on that one, man. VGC, very good condition. New without ta- Oh, wow, wow. If you gave it to me, I'd probably be able to know what that one is. But yeah, just then I was like, oh, I wonder what that one is without reading the, the message by the side of it, of course. Uh, new with, uh, without box. Ho oh, I didn't know. Whoa, I don't know these ones. Oh, no, I'm not an eBay pro. I'm not an eBay pro. I don't know these H F H T F. Has anyone ever used that? Hard to find. I've I've never heard. I've been reselling almost five years. I've never even heard that. No, I, I mean, I've heard hard to find, but not that abbreviation of it. Yeah. So what else is there? Uh, no reserve. I've not heard that one. Uh, vintage. Uh, oh, I'm not. Well, I've heard like vintage condition V C or. Something like that anyway, but I've not heard VTG, that's interesting. Yeah, learn the lingo, there you go, that's a good one. Don't use opinion-based adjectives in your listing title. Well, I have heard from eBay themselves that this is not a good thing to do, so yeah, okay, that's a little bit of an, an eBay hack there. Buyers aren't searching for words like beautiful, stylish, or gorgeous. Stick to useful, factual description word, descriptive words about your products, uh, like it's make, colour, and size. Yeah, that's a good eat. I, I actually wait that one. I think that's a pretty good one. But saying that, if you've got the characters to spare in your title and you really can't fit anything else in, then putting something like that, you know, on the top line, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, if you haven't got the characters to spare, of course. But yeah, that's a good one because it obviously directs more. It gives you more search traffic towards your listing. 
Research the most popular keywords. Find out the most searched for um, find out the most for, uh, searched for keywords to include in your listing title with the free eBay Pulse tool. Now this is a good one because I've not heard about this. Found on the Goofbid website. Now I used to use Goofbid quite a lot for sniping and stuff, but I think it's a paid for service now, and I've, I just I kind of stopped. I stopped using it before it was a paid for service, but then I went back to it thinking, oh yeah, I'll use that. But then I was like, oh, it's a paid for service. Now, you know what I'm like? I'm a reseller. I'm tight. I don't, I don't pay for things. <laughs> oh God, that makes me sound like a criminal. I'm not a criminal. I just, I'm tight. That's what I am. Um, the tool will also indicate buyers most wanted brands from each eBay category. So that's it. That's an interesting one, actually. That's quite interesting. This information indicates that buyers will be interested. Oh, that's interesting, then, yeah? Sell seasonally. That's a... Again, I mean, it's not really a hack, is it? It's something that most people know these days, but okay. Avoid selling winter items in summer. Not many people will be searching for faux fur coats in June, July, or August. You see, it's a fairly entry-level hack, to be honest, if you could even call it a hack. Um, but yeah, so sell seasonally. Okay, I get that. Um, sell when there is likely. Uh, sell when it's likely there will be high demand for that particular product to attract more bidders. And then finally, remember to do all the checks. If you're new to eBay, remember to do all the checks before you bid on an item. Check the seller's history. Check at a seller's location. Check price of postage, etc. Um, yeah, but again, I wouldn't really say it's an eBay hack. It's just something that a good buyer should do, you know, just check them out a bit. Um, mainly just, I mean, really, I, I, I say that, but I, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because all I do when I'm buying something off eBay is I check how many feedback the person's got and I check the feedback score and that's about it. And then, oh no, I check the, well, of course I check the price and I check the, um, you know, the delivery option to see how fast I'm going to get it. But that's about it. Um, I don't. Uh, well, oh yeah, actually I do, oh yeah, actually I do, I do actually do most of these things because I do check the seller's location because I do that by default when I'm actually looking at the uh, postage, obviously you can see where the seller is located, so yeah, okay, I do kind of do them anyway, but still, um, it, it's kind of just basic buyer's knowledge that, that people should do really, you should know not to buy off someone with, you know, 82% feedback or something, you know, it's a bit dodgy, um, you know, then, you, but you should know that, basically, so, uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not a major hack, anyway, so, that is it for today's video, that is some of the eBay hacks I have to share with you on this article here, um, and, yeah, I suppose I will see you in the next one, so if you haven't already, then please do feel free to subscribe to the channel, if you did like the video, then please do whack a big like on it down below, and, uh, yeah, comment down below if you've got any comments, questions, or queries in relation to this video, and I will see you in the next one, so see you very soon, guys. Peace.